Hi DIYers, Joe here at Alarm Grid, and today we're going to show you how to wire up a 5883 transceiver module. Now, the 5883 is a standalone transceiver that can be used with a compatible Vista system, and it lets you interface wireless devices to the system. As you can see right here, we have our Vista 21 IP all set up, and on the board, these don't have a receiver module to work with wireless devices. Now, when I say wireless devices, I'm talking about the 5800 wireless line. There's a whole bunch of different sensors available. If you go to our website, we have a ton of them listed. There's a, um, many different types, and you should be able to find one that suits the need that you're looking to secure with your system, whether it be arming, berg, fire, uh, flood detection, all that. It's all within the 5800 line, so definitely check it out. But as I said before, on this system, it doesn't have a built-in receiver or transceiver module, so you actually have to install one. Now, I have a new 5883 in the box right here, and I just want to review what I mean by transceiver when I say it. So there's two different types of receivers for the system. There's receiver-only modules, and there's transceiving modules. The receiver modules, they only receive information from sensors. Those devices, they won't be able to support two-way um, two devices, such as the 5828 keypad that sends information in two directions. To use that, you would need to use a transceiver module that has a receiver and a transmitter built right into the unit. The 5883 does have that, and it's the recommended one to use if you're going to use a standalone receiver or transceiver for your system. Another benefit to the 5883 is that it can support as many wireless zones as the system can handle. So if you want to go fully wireless, you can just fill your zone list up with as many as you like with this device. So let's take it out of the box. This is the box right here. We open it up, we have our transceiver unit, we have two antennas that install onto the unit, we also have some other stuff too. We have our instruction manual that's going to show us how to set the dip switches on the unit, and we also have a little packet of screws and the wire connection for the, uh, for the device. So if we pop this open, There's a couple things in here. You have your wire harness. This is a four wire connection. And it's got a little mod clip right there that can plug right into the, uh, the board on the 5883. If I open it up, I'll show you what that looks like. So, as you can see, if I can find it right there. This connection right here is the connection for the mod plug. This is going to plug in right here onto the board, and then this can connect back to the ECP bus on your system. That's these four terminals. It's going to use the same ECP bus that you use for any other device, such as a keypad or any other power device that needs to parse data back and forth from the system. Um, with this, if this is going to be installed somewhere further away from the system, and you won't be able to reach back to the system with the included wire harness, you can always splice additional wires onto this to extend it to get it back to your panel. Now also, you'll see that in the kit, it actually comes with panel mounting screws and panel mounting plastic pieces. What you can do with this is you can actually mount this inside of a, uh, of a alarm box such as this one with the board taken out of the white housing and mounted inside. These screws will allow you to do that. The only thing that you're going to want to do is if you do mount this outside of its plastic housing inside of a metal box, the terminals up here on the right hand side, these are going to have to connect to the ground or these are going to have to ground to a grounding connection if it's mounted inside of a metal box. The reason for that is it's going to reduce the amount of interference that this, the device gets and it will allow it to continue to work with the maximum amount of communication range that it can use with 5800 devices. Now, these terminals right here, these are actually where the antennas go. So if you're going to mount it inside of a metal box, you use the left ones to ground, and the right ones are actually where your antennas are going to sit. What they do is they just slip right in to the, to the opening right there, and then you're going to take a screwdriver and tighten the set screw down. There's two antennas that come with this device, and you're definitely going to want to install both of them, or you're going to see really poor signal range. Also, 
you're going to notice right here in the middle of the board are the dip switches for configuring the, uh, the 5883. Now, on a Vista 15P, on a 20P, and on a 21IP, the device addresses in these panels are already set up. So what you want this to be set to is having all the dip switches being set to off as far as one through four. If you look at the manual right here, this actually shows you exactly how you have to configure the switches. And on a non-polling loop panel, as in a panel that doesn't use polling loop, such as the 15P, the 20P, and the 21IP, you want it to be set to the non-addressed uh, item right there. For that to hit that, that'll set the, the receiver at a 0, 0 address, which will make it work with the panel. And it will also automatically set the transceiver portion of it to address 28, which is also a preset device address in your system. Now, if you look, uh, dip switch number five is, has to be set to off. Dip switch number six is to enable the, uh, the transmitter. So if you are using bi-directional devices, you will want to turn dip switch number six on. Dip switch number seven isn't used, and dip switch number eight is used for deleting RF keypads, which we're not going to get into today. Now, one thing to take note of on the dip switches themselves, you're going to see that there's this weird plastic film that's on the top of them. That's actually an electromagnetic protector, so it doesn't get damaged from any static discharge. When you go to move the dip switches, you're going to notice that you're going to have to dig into the plastic screen. It's going to get kind of crappy. You're going to tear it a little bit, and it will get holes. That's totally normal, and feel free to just leave that static protector on there. Even if it's damaged and ripped up, it's still going to work and provide some protection. You'll also want to make sure that you do your power calculation when adding this to the system. This device doesn't take too much power. The 5883, it only takes 80 milliamps of power. So if you do have a whole bunch of stuff on your system, you will want to do a power calculation just to make sure that it doesn't overdraw and give you some weird operation. But if you only have a keypad or two on your panel, it's not going to draw that much power, and you can just go ahead and install it. So as you can see, we've mounted the 5883 on the wall, and it's ready to go. The mod cable that comes with the 5883, it's only about this long. So what I have to do is actually extend it to get it into the box. Now if we take the cover off the 5883, you'll see the mod cable right here. And there's five wires that are attached to it. Now this connects to the ECP bus on the Vista system, which is color coded. And that's going to tell you that the cable that you're not going to use is the blue one. The red and the black, those are going to go to our power and uh, ground and then our yellow and our green are going to go to the data connections on the system. This little mod cable, it's great to you actually have to use it to power this up. And this is, a, this is going to plug in to this little clip right here on the side. You just want to make sure that your orientation is correct. It has these little slots here on the front of it, and they're going to go against the board and these little grooves on the back of the mod clip. So slip it right in. And as you can see, it starts to power up and it begins working because I already have it wired down here. Now, if we look at our panel, this is our extension cable that I've spliced into the mod cable from the, uh, the 5883. And this cable has the same color codes as the mod cable. I got a black, a red, a green, and a yellow. What I've done is literally just take the wire from here and splice it to the wire on the cable. And as you can see, they're going to the corresponding terminals. The black is going to terminal number four. The red is going to terminal number five. The green is going to terminal number six. And the yellow is going to terminal number seven. If you have any problems with the operation of your 5883 or it's not powering up, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is double check that your wiring connections for it are good and complete and that it is plugged in. If you do have any questions about installing a 5883 on your Vista system, Feel free to give us a call, 888-818-7728. You can also head over to the website, alarmgrid.com, or send us an email to support at alarmgrid.com with any questions that you have. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more, feel free to subscribe and hit the notification button to get updated when we post future ones. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.